Good morning and welcome. So, now we essentially move to the main business part of this course, uh, which are basically divided into two parts. One is this elliptic part, other is the evolution part. For the evolution part, a new theory, the semi group theory will also be developed. So, next 7 hours roughly 14 lectures, we will be discussing about elliptic equations, its weak formulation. So, the whole thing is elliptic equations, few systems, elliptic equations and weak formulation. So, what are the things where you want to study the well postness? Well postness means existence, uniqueness, continuous dependence, continuous dependence. We also study sometimes regularity theory, some regularity. Regularity is important as we have already discussed when uh, the solution you may get it in a some sublo space, but you see that whether you can have better growth rate or better uh, H spaces higher order sublo spaces and eventually even though you will be studying the regularity the existence theory and in weak spaces and weak formulation, you eventually want to see whether that solutions are classic. Okay. So, to do this, what we will do is that we study some abstract theory. So, that through the abstract theory, you can study various differential equations and then we will study various boundary conditions. various boundary conditions and especially Dirichlet, Neumann, Robin etcetera. Okay. We would also like to study stock system at least some remarks about the stock system which is a system. On this abstract theory, you will see lax milgram lemma, milgram theorem of Stambachia variational inequality, theorem of Stambachia equally some variational inequality. inequality and uh, uh, we will also see babuska brissi theorem babuska brissi lemma brissi theorem useful for systems useful for systems in fact, even sometimes the equations can be converted into a system and you can apply Babos Kaprasi theorem. We will make remarks. And then we want to do the spectral analysis, spectral analysis. That means uh, Egan Valley problem. Egan Valley problem. And some, uh, I hope some uh, thing, some regularity we already mentioned and maybe some maximum principles, maximum principles. Okay. That is the rough aim of this course probably in the 14 lectures, we will do that equivalently 7 hours, we will do that. Okay. 
ഓക്കെ സോ ഹൗ എ ജനറൽ എലിപ്റ്റ് പി ഡി ഇ ജനറൽ സെക്കൻഡ് ഓർഡർ ലീനിയർ പി ഡി ഇ ഗിവൺ ബൈ വി ഓൾറെഡി മെൻഷൻഡ് ഇൻ ദി ഫസ്റ്റ് കോഴ്സ് ഓൺ പി ഡി ഇ സോ എൽ ഓഫ് യു ഈസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു മൈനസ് I will be using summation concept here. d square u by dx i dx j and uh, plus a i of d u by dx i plus a naught of u of course uh, equal to f. Okay. There, so, uh, uh, we use this notation also d i j of u. this we use d i of u okay eventually and summation is there basically okay i will not mention this is a summation convention which we already discussed it of course these are functions of x a not of x functions of x and uh, a equal to a i j a i a not r the input data are given which we call it inputs okay. inputs we make appropriate assumptions of course we make appropriate assumptions one of the assumption is the ellipticity otherwise it's a very general second order linear equations so one of uh, appropriate assumptions okay so on the data you have to make that such assumptions on the data okay so first we will start with we'll come back to this general case a little later so first consider l not of u equal to a uh, here you have a i j uh, so you have your a i j of x minus d i j of u equal to f that means uh, you are assuming a i equal to zero and identically you are a not identically zero so we'll discuss these kind of things or also assumption so let me start with the definition will give some motivations the operator l not is called elliptic in fact uniformly elliptic is a very strong condition to make it into an elliptic class uniformly elliptic if there exists alpha positive such that uh, aij xi i psi j of course i said there is summation always so whether i make it in a repeated indices the summation is used on i i this should be greater than or equal to alpha into mod psi square this psi is a vector for all psi is in r okay so that's why it's a, so this is an important condition so one assumption which you make it so we are considering elliptic operators only in this course so we also have the boundedness condition other assumption boundedness boundedness of aij okay so basically it says that uh, aij belongs to l infinity of some domain we are already dealing with some domain omega is in r okay open set 
Okay. So, this assumption we may write it in different ways. Uh, one uh, various ways you can write these assumptions uh, uh, are written in different ways like that some places we use it uh, uh, some books you may see that a x of psi is less than or equal to m into mod psi that is one way of writing is uh, so you will see different ways of doing that or uh, you write it uh, a x a x psi psi sorry A x psi, which is a vector in R n. So, you have R n in a pod I less than or equal to m into uh, you can write it mod psi square. So, basically with ellipticity and this assumption you can combined way you can write that is how many books will write combined way write the assumption as uh, uh, some alpha into mod psi square less than or equal to a i j psi i psi j less than or equal to m into mod psi square. So, you will see books uh, writing the assumptions in various. So, there exists uh, alpha m positive and this should happen for all psi in R. Okay. So, uh, if you look at it, uh, this is basically the ellipticity is uh, essentially uniform positive definiteness, essentially the positive definiteness of the matrix, uniform positive definition, positive uniform positive definiteness of A x you see. Now, just a digression here just I want to tell you something if A is if A is constant matrix is a constant matrix constant matrix and uh, positive definite Def positive definite, then A is invertible and A x equal to B is uniquely solvable, you see, clear, solvable and uh, other uh, remark is that A has a has n up to counted up to multiplicity has n positive eigenvalues. So, you see positive eigenvalues. Okay. So, you want to study a similar thing. So, you expect so that natural thing expect L naught of u equal to f soluble Of course, there are difficulties which you want to remark when you go to because now the solubility is in a function space, infinite dimensional situation, and also existence of eigenvalues. Whether we can do existence of eigenvalues. Of course, what we are going to do it uh, uh, for the weak formulation. Formulation. But let me make one remark again here. Even for the uh, classical case, classical case. Look at this equation minus Laplace. You know this you have studied in our not part one, our uh, <coughs> first course on partial differential equations in omega, and. Uh, u equal to g on d omega. So, this you can uh, uh, indeed divide u into two form v plus w 
with minus Laplace n of v equal to f and v equal to 0 on d omega this is in omega and then minus Laplace n of w equal to 0 in omega and w equal to g on d omega. The remark what I want to make as far as this equation is concerned this is the study of potential theory. potential theory and when we are looking for v in look for looking for v, if v in c 2 that will imply essentially f is continuous. So, we expect a solution for Laplace you know v equal to 0 f with f continuity, but unfortunately we need there are we need more stronger assumption just continuity of f is not enough continuity of f is not enough ok. So, this is separate and we need what is called F is a maybe I will write it in the next page is coming because uh, what we need is F should be in some con uh, helder continuity. So, we need little more assumption. So, even for the solubility the potential theories and regarding this equation is concerned in the first course on PDE we introduce Perron's method and for the existence need regularity of omega you see regularity of omega. So, you require assumptions even in the classical case to do it ok. So, exactly what we have done for the splitting ok. So, what uh, so again uh, do the same thing can be done due to linearity. due to linearity here also we can do L naught of u equal to f and then boundary condition. The boundary condition can be u equal to g or d u by d nu equal to g or something like that the mixed boundary conditions Robin boundary conditions it can be anything. So, you can split you can again write u equal to v plus w with L naught of v equal to 0 f plus boundary con plus 0 boundary condition 0 boundary condition whatever be that linear situation and L naught of w is equal to 0 with a plus boundary condition that means non homogeneous here it is homogeneous boundary condition homogeneous here it is non homogeneous. This is the non linear feature you can do that conditions here. Now, so we will uh, the same thing can be what Laplace and now I want to recall the some motivation which we have so, we will uh, uh, have to do the uh, variational formulation. So, recall the motivation we have given during the first part of this course ok. There we considered the Poincare functional if you recall the Poincare functional half of grade u square or half of grade v square with v in 
C 1 naught of omega bar. And just recall the requirement of requirement of this is the right time on the motivation that time requirement of completing C 1 of naught of omega bar with respect to this Dirichlet norm with respect to grade V square whole power half uh, in. So, that means or with respect to H 1 norm whatever you have called it okay. and which gives you your space H 1 naught of omega h 1 naught of omega. So, that is a Sobolev space we will be using to study these equations. Okay. So, uh, okay. so, let me write down. So, let us consider slightly general function. Okay. So, now consider little general more general consider the functional so, I am just this is already explained uh, in a slightly more general is equal to half of grade v square plus half of integral v square this is over omega this is the energy functional. For example, if you study elasticity system you will see that this is a strain energy function in applications. Okay. So, such energy functionals or course functional all that will be coming to you. Okay. So, what do you want to do it? So, what is the problem which you have taken for motivation? Problem is uh, because you want to minimize the energy for all possible admissible class of functions. So, you want to find v u in x x is let me denote by c 1 naught of omega bar. So, I am just recalling what I have introduced and now because we have now the Sobolev spaces uh, uh, we can do everything now here what you wanted it wanted to achieve. Okay. So, you want to find the f of u is equal to minimum you want to solve this problem or infimum where v in c 1 naught of omega bar with uh, f of v. Okay. So, uh, what we have done is that if u is a solution if u bar is a solution if u bar in x is a solution what do you do is that you compute your f prime of u bar should be 0 that is the kind of calculations you have done. But what is f prime of u? f prime of u bar is a mapping from because it is a uh, fresher derivative it is a mapping from something like x that is a question you have to where do you want to do that one okay, which will make it very clear and you can see that f prime of u bar acting at v should be integral of grade u bar grade v plus integral of v u v u bar v is minus integral of f v. I call this to be a u v because this is the notation I am going to use it and this is a bilinear form bilinear form. And thus this gives you we need to study Study. Uh, find u bar in x such that your a u v equal to f v integral of f v for all a u bar v for all v in h 1 naught. Okay, for not h 1 naught yet. I just want to tell why you need h 1 naught. Okay, so, for all v so in x 
So, this is essentially Ries representation theorem because this is the norm there. So, it is essentially Ries representation theorem. Ries representation theorem. But to apply Ries representation theorem, you need the completion, we need the completion of of x with respect to the grade norm or an h 1 norm. Okay. Completion of x which is h 1 naught. So, we have for this Laplacian which we will do it for general elliptic equation. So, uh, uh, so, since uh, uh, so this equation, this equation, this equation is also in uh, because uh, the space x is dense in h 1 naught of omega. So, that equation is actually uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, so we get it in h 1 naught. So, imply this find a u bar of v, I will sometimes I may not use u bar, you just integral of f v for all v in h 1 naught of omega and you f look for your u bar is in h 1 naught of omega. So, you can basically for this is almost uh, your Ries representation, but we are going to do it uh, for more uh, things. Okay. So, the same thing now for the L naught for L naught we can do the same thing we can go ahead with the for L naught uh, we have to define we define A u v is equal to integral of A i j of x d u by uh, d x j and d v by d x i over omega and now this for all u v in h 1 naught of omega. So, one remark which anyway we are going to formalize everything. If a equal to a i j symmetric this is an additional assumption end of it we do not need it we will study, but then there are advantages if you assume symmetric. If A is symmetric and of course, with uh, boundedness and ellipticity boundedness ellipticity this is a some simple exercise which you can show then A u v defines a new inner product defines a new inner product. The earlier one is say for the Laplacian case because Laplacian is a special case of A i j when you take yeah this remark probably I did not make it uh, if A i j is equal to delta i j you get L naught is equal to Laplacian ok here not you can see that. So, the Laplacian is a special case of L naught. So, when you have Laplacian, it is a normal product, it is a same inner product of H 1 omega. So, it is a kind of uh, immediate application of your Ries representation theorem, but uh, when you have a symmetry of A, you have defined a new inner product in H 1 of omega which is equivalent to due to ellipticity. So, symmetry is needed to prove that it is an inner product and use your boundedness and ellipticity which is equivalent to the which is equivalent to to the given inner product on given inner product inner product on h 1 of omega. 
So, just prove it, it is a trivial thing, but it is nice to get familiarized with uh, such theorems. Okay. So, you get the same topology, same standard topology and uh, you can uh, get in there. So, uh, uh, basically uh, what you are trying to prove is, uh, uh, is a, uh, uh, basically you are going to again apply your Ries representation theorem with respect to the new inner product okay, of AUV. Okay. So, that is what you are doing and that is essentially the content of last milligram lemma, content of lags milligram lemma. Okay. And which we will be doing it. Okay. So, this came up. I want to make one more remark here and then I will end this talk and then we will consider. So, one more remark. Suppose u is a solution, suppose u is the solution of uh, this A u v for Laplacian. You can apply for the uh, general elliptic case also integral of grade u grade v plus integral of f v equal to uh, sorry integral of u v integral of u v equal to f v. Okay. So, this is what you are going to do it u in h 1 naught of omega and as if u is in c 2 of omega if. So, you are assuming a more regularity then I can do an integration by parts uh, uh, c 2 say omega. So, then I can do an integration by parts to show that minus Laplacian of u plus u minus f over v equal to 0 over omega this is for all v in h 1 naught of omega. And this is a dense you note that this is actually a dense space in dense in L 2, dense in L 2 of omega keep that in mind. And since u is in C 2 of omega this is in L 2. Therefore, this equation is valid in L 2 of omega that implies so, you have an integral of a 2 L 2 functions for all v in L 2 of omega. So, this equation is valid mean for all v in L 2 of omega. That implies minus Laplacian of u plus u equal to f almost everywhere in omega. And uh, if you have the continuity of f, continuity of f <coughs> implies uh, in the other case you need f is in only L 2. So, we are going to study that f is in L 2. So, implies uh, minus Laplacian of u plus u equal to f point wise. So, you get a point wise thing. Okay. So, that is why called so your p d e is obtained by making an additional assumption u is in C 2 of omega part and uh, this formulation star this is your a strong formulation. So, star is called the weak formulation, weak formulation of the P D E double star of double star. So, you get your P D E only when uh, you make further assumptions. So, that gives you an immediate thing your weak formulation is actually more closer to your uh, original problem. So, so, the weak formulation is not something artificially created from your thing, but then we also need to use your a strong form if possible you want to get it uh, use the rich theory available for that one. So, we have to when u is not smooth you basically have to stick to your weak formulation 
and that is why we need to study that. Okay. Thank you. So, we will continue the lecture uh, in the by giving some abstract formulation. Thank you.